So in this video, I am going to answer Amanda's emailed question. She wrote in and said the following, I would love some help. I have a bright, alert, and happy six-month-old baby whom I have rocked to sleep for every night and every nap. I just started your sleep coaching last night for his bedtime as he started to continuously wake up throughout the night and I would have to rock him to sleep or nurse him again. So I started putting him down to sleep by rocking. Before he was asleep, I put him in the crib of which he promptly woke up from and wanted to play. This happened tonight as well. He'll want to play for me with me for like 30 to 40 minutes or just play in his crib. I kept trying to turn him over as he sleeps on his tummy, but I fear that might make him more mad or stimulated. He's just never fallen back to sleep or he's just never fallen asleep on his back before. Basically, I just sit next to his bed while he plays until he gets so tired he starts to cry and then I pick him up and I put him back down like you suggest. That is what finally got him to settle and sleep, but I fear it's because I was holding him. Although only for a few seconds and not because he just put himself to sleep by himself. Amanda, you made some very good uh, awarenesses on your own. So I find that if a child is, um, you know, put down into their bed and either they have a revived new energy or they wake up half an hour later, it usually means that they were put down to sleep too drowsy. So I noticed that you said that you rock him a little bit before you put him in and then he gets all spruced up and ready to go. Um, I want you to reduce the rocking. So I want you to have the nighttime routine before you put him in the crib with the light on. No, it doesn't have to be a 150 watt bulb, but at least want a light on. We have a nice little routine, whether it's like a singing or a sing-songy book and kisses, turn off the light and into the crib. Okay, so that was very important. So I want you to, again, put him down a little bit earlier in the routine and not tease him with a little rocking because you're absolutely right. You can teach him to get really upset and hysterical until you pick him up and hold him to sleep. So you're right. I want you to be careful about that. The other thing is that if he knows how to roll himself over both ways himself, that I do want you to stop flipping him over. It's just like when a child learns to stand in the crib. I don't want you to get into that physical struggle of putting them down and they stand up and you put them down and they stand up. It's the same for flipping the pancake. Okay. If he hasn't mastered it, then I want him to really have more floor time during the day. And I want you to encourage him to learn how to do it on his own. You can even kind of help him a little bit uh, during the day so he can master it at night. Uh, Cause I don't want you to get into that struggle. Okay. So important points again, put him down more awake. Don't get into a struggle about flipping him and don't train him to cry until you pick him up, even for a few seconds and until he's quite drowsy again. Remember, if you pick up your child when they're crying and they're immediately quiet, you got had. I've also seen children who are rocked to sleep who have this amazing ability, which I still can't believe. They'll cry hysterically, you pick them up, and in under a minute, they fall asleep in your arms, which... I can't even imagine doing that myself. So I want you to be careful that that doesn't happen because then if that were to happen, you get a little bit cornered and we have to take out of our toolkit, pick up to come, right? Because you'll train them to get hysterical, pick them up, they fall asleep in your arms. So instead, you'll have to do more shushing, patting, and reassuring that way. So I want you to avoid that. Okay, I hope all those tips are helpful. Remember to stay consistent. This first week is pivotal.